it's February 2015 and welcome back to a brand new episode. Now it's the start of the growing year and it's all hands on deck to get everything ready and to get all those seeds sown but first on my list is to get planning. Now before I go through all the seeds that I've chosen to grow this year, I thought I'd give you all a little walkthrough of the allotment and what's changed. Now as you know I'm getting chickens, so I've had to rearrange the veg, veg plots a little bit. Because obviously last year this was the lagoon bed and then I had the roots bed and the brassica bed over on the other side. So there's a three year rotational crop there. Um, but to make way for the chickens, this is going to be the chicken area and then the vegetable beds are going to be made a little bit smaller and they're all going to fit into one strip over the other side but I'll get to them in a minute. So this is where the chickens are going to go. I'm going to make a walk-in cage which is going to go from about here. I'm going to leave a little bit of room between the archway because obviously the pumpkins will still be growing up there. So it'll go from here to here which is roughly about about 2.25 meters and it's three meters deep. So I'm going to build the walk-in run. There's going to be a coop in there and maybe a little dust bath station as well, um, which I'm planning on making. Um, and that's the chicken run done. Next door to that, there's going to be a little pathway. And then at the end of the pathway, there's going to be like a bin where I can put all the chicken poo, because obviously I can use that on, on the vegetable plots later. And then right at the far end on this bed, there's just enough room to put a little cut flower patch. Now it's going to measure roughly about one metre by three metres in length. And there's plans to put a globe artichoke right at the far end in the corner there. And then the rest is just going to be nice loads of cut flowers. Um, but like I said, I'll get onto which seed varieties I've chosen later. Obviously the strawberries are staying there because they've got their raised beds and their cages so they always stay there. They've just been freshly mulched with manure, well rotted manure so they're fine. Now in the trough last year I had tomatoes but this year I've decided to put tulips in them because the tomatoes didn't really work. Um, and there's about 55 tulips in there. And there are plans again to put a gherkin at the end because that worked really well last year and they were really yummy. In the pot there's gypsophila. Now that's only about two years old. There wasn't much on there last year, but what I've done is I've just pruned it back and hopefully it'll come back more. There's tulips in the pot and there's tulips in the pot down there. And then the archway is just gonna be the same as last year. There's gonna be munchkin pumpkins on there. There's gonna be bolotti beans and sweet peas as well. And I've just give that a nice little layer of well rotted manure as well, just hopefully to boost the growing around there. So like I said just now, the three vegetable beds are fitting into this space here. Now last year there were two beds here and then obviously the lagoon bed was over where the chickens are going so they've been made a little bit smaller just so all three of them can fit into here. Um, and this bed here is going to be the, the root bed but I'll be putting all the potatoes into there just because the, the beds are so small it just makes sense to put in as much potatoes as I can. Now the next bed, which will be starting here, is going to be the lagoon bed. And then the next bed starts here, and that's going to be the brassica bed. The fruit cage is just going to stay like it is. Hopefully this year it will have a net around it, because last year the birds ate all the berries. There wasn't many berries last year, but the birds ate them all. Um, and I'm actually in the process of laying down membrane and laying down bark on there. Now we made this bark at home because my dad chopped a tree down and we just shredded all the branches and there's so much at home. So there's going to be enough to cover this, except from the raspberries, I'm not going to cover the raspberries. 
and so this won't need weeding either so the plan for the fruit cage is just to net it and to get it ready and hopefully this year there will be lots more berries now the pond area is basically going to be the same as what it was last year there's going to be lots of flowers around there there's a grapevine in the middle which will hopefully grow a little bit obviously i won't be getting grapes for a few years yet the two roses are on the shed they've just been pruned um, and hopefully the climbing rose will just climb up the side of the shed this year and it'll look really nice um, but no that will just be covered in flowers again so there's going to be a lot of cut flowers this year now that's basically the plans for the allotment so what i do now is i will go through all the seed varieties which i've chosen and just go through the whole plan and what i've done so far and how i've drawn it because i've gone a little bit mad with the plans and um, but we'll go through the seeds so i've been having to bring up a flask of tea just because the gas has run out on my little cooker <laughs> and I need to have tea up the allotment. It's a necessity. <laughs> so I'm having to bring a flask up until I get a new gas bottle. Um, but let's get on with the planning. Now this is the most exciting part for me. Just because you've been cooped up inside all winter and you're dying to get out on the allotment so the only thing to do is to plan. Um, and I use graph paper for my plans. Um, that way you can get everything spot on because when I first got my allotment I measured it all out I measured the veg beds um, so by using graft paper you can get every measurement right you can get all the spacings between each plant right um, and that way you can be really thorough so when it comes to actually planting things you can just get on with it <laughs> which is great so I get my seeds from Sutton's just simply because they tend to have everything in one place and it just makes life so much easier um, but I do like to get my flower seeds from Sarah Raven. She's got such a great variety of flowers and they're so beautiful. So I do recommend checking out her website and her catalogue because it's beautiful. You will fall in love. Um, and she also does a few vegetables as well, which are quite nice. I do get my pumpkins from her just because they're a little bit different. Um, so that's where I get my seeds from. But this year, I'm hoping to save as much seed as possible just because obviously seeds can mount up a bit and they are a little bit expensive especially when you think that you you can get them for free by just getting them from your own crops letting your crops go to seed and just taking them so this year I'm hoping to save as much seed as possible it'll be really interesting as well I think so so that's the plan with the seeds so let's get on with the vegetable beds now like I said, I have three vegetable beds. That's a three year rotational plan. So there's the brassicas, the legumes and the root bed. So we'll start with the brassicas. So I have got in the brassica bed, one row of garlic called Provence. Now that's already in there, that's growing really well. There is one row of scarlet kale, one row of red drumhead cabbage, one giant pumpkin and one crown prince pumpkin. Now me and my dad are having a little bit of a competition with the pumpkins. We're going to try and see who can grow the biggest pumpkin. Now he's got a little bit of advantage because he's got a compost heap so he's going to grow his on there. So he'll probably win but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try my hardest. Um, and the Crown Prince pumpkins have like a bluey, silvery flesh and they're supposed to be really, really delicious so I thought I'd give them a go. And also what I'm going to put in the brassica bed is some nasturtiums just because they are really yummy in salads but also because um, of companion planting they're supposed to deter athids and white cabbage flies so I thought I'd give that a go again I did it last year but I thought I'd do it again just because it just brightens it up a bit and and they are delicious in salads so on with the legume beds there's going to be two rows of Swiss chard bright lights two rows of climbing French beans cobra one row of aqua dulce claudia broad beans they are already in there and three rows of carrots called Amsterdam Forcing 3. Now the root bed is just going to be completely potatoes. There's going to be two rows of international kidney potatoes and two rows of Charlotte potatoes. Now there's only four rows of potatoes in there but that's all that could fit which is why I put the carrots next door in the lagoon bed. Because obviously my dad's got a bigger allotment. He's growing the main crop and the second early. So I'm going to be growing the salads and the early varieties. 
Um, and I grew international kidney last year and they were really delicious. So I'm going to grow them again. But I thought I'd give Charlotte a go as well. So what I've also done, I've created a second growing season plan, which is when some of the crops are going to come out and I can fill those gaps with more crops because there's still plenty of time. So when the garlic comes out in June and July, I'll be putting some purple top Vienna turnips in and one row of purple Vienna kohlrabi. So it'll just be one row each of them. And then when the broad beans come out, I'll be putting in some dwarf French beans called purple queen. And then when the two rows of international kidneys come out, I'll be putting three, lo- three rows of mussel borough leek in there. So hopefully there'll be things growing in the allotment throughout the year, which would be great, I'm trying to get the most out of it. So, oh no, I forgot the, the archway. That's just going to be the same as last year. There's going to be the climbing munchkin pumpkins um, and some of the balotti beans again called fire tongue because they were really, really great climbing up there. I got so much from there. And there's also going to be sweet peas up there. Um, and there's going to be lots more flowers. So much more flowers. So we'll go on to them now. So there's going to be the extra bed by the chickens. And there's going to be a globe artichoke in there. Now I've never tried growing globe globe artichoke. I've never tasted it or anything. So if I don't like the taste of it, it flowers beautifully. So I thought it would just look really nice in there. And obviously it will bring the bees in because the bees just love it. Now that variety is called Violet de Provence and that's from Sarah Raven. That's like a purple variety. Um, In that flower bed, there's just going to be loads of flowers. Obviously, with that flower bed and the flowers around by the pond, I'm probably just going to mix and match them. Um, But there are a few that I want to grow, especially for cut flowers. There's some grass I'm going to grow called Bunny's Tail Grass. It sounds really interesting. There's some sea holly. Some scabious, a tall double mix of scabious. A poppy called Candy Floss. Some gypsophila called Covent Garden, a giant dahlia mix of zinnias, a small variety of sunflower called Junior, and some sweet Williams. They're a perfume mix, so hopefully they smell really nice. They might actually mask the smell of the chickens, <laughs> which is great. So, round by the wildlife pond, there's going to be a few sort of wilder looking flowers, but like I said, I'll probably just mix and match both of the flower patches but what I am going to do I'm going to put some of the giant sunflowers along the back of the pond again because they worked really well they didn't grow very big I must say but um they look quite nice at the back then obviously they give some height which is perfect so that's just a giant yellow sunflower some more zinnias there called the sprite mix dwarf cosmos some oxide daisies a beautiful blue poppy which I think just looks absolutely stunning. You don't see many blue flowers. There's also going to be some wild carrots. Now these flower really, really nice. And they have like a bluey, pink, uh, bluey purpley shade. So I thought I'd give them a try. And there's also going to be some dill there. And you can use that in flower arranging as well as cooking because it's quite a nice floral, uh, quite a nice foliage in with the flower bouquet. There's also some more flowers that I want to go. I told you there was a lot of flowers, but these ones are edible. Now there's some borage, some violas, some calendula, and some garlic chives. And there's also a flower called malop, which is called strawberries and cream mix. And that's edible as well. I've never tried that one before, so that'd be interesting. And I'll probably just dot them around, around the wildlife patch, or probably in some pots somewhere. So that's the flowers. Yeah, that's all the flowers. <laughs> There's also the gherkin, which will go in the tulip trough called Venlo Pickling. Now I grew that last year, I only got about three or four gherkins from there. There was only one plant um, and it is only me that eats them. So four was, was more than enough and I pickled some as well, which was great. And I also want to have a go at growing some ginger in a pot just down at the end of the pathway. 
I've never grown ginger before so if anyone's got any hints or any tips then that would be great but I thought I'd give it a go because I like to eat ginger and you can add ginger to a lot of things so I thought why not I'll give it a go why not <laughs> so that's vegetables flowers all the other little bits I think that's about it yeah yeah that's it that's that's all the seeds I think that's all the seeds if I've missed any then um, then I will just I put everything on my blog I put all the plans I put all the seeds I will just put everything over on my blog so just go out and check that out if you want to look in more detail on what I'm growing and how my allotment's going to look um, but that's it so I'm going to enjoy my tea um, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>